Um, this is called buy or sell. There are five statements made. You're either buying or you're selling. You can agree or disagree. That's pretty much the simple way that buy or sell works. It's not crypto. It's not flipping houses. Two media legends, five topics, and a moment of jackassery. This is buy or sell. That's buy or freaking sell. All right, here we go. Buy or sell number one. The Cowboys are more likely to win out than the Eagles. Buy or sell. Man, I'm buying because the Eagles just just don't look right. And I know crack is whack, and I'm 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 off the wagon, Jeff Ward. I'm, I just fell off the wagon. Uh oh. I'm back in. The Eagles just look broken, and Jalen Hurts has fumbled in seven straight games. And when they come up against a team that can hit them in the mouth like Dallas, it it's it's really something to see now. The Eagles, I think, have an easier road. They play the Seahawks this week, and uh, they get the Cardinals, and then two against the Giants. That's an easy schedule on its surface, but they've been playing down to the competition. And I I think that the Cowboys, uh, even though they've got playoff teams on the schedule, they're at Buffalo, a desperate Buffalo this week, and then they're at Miami, uh, which is always tough. And then Detroit, and then at Washington. Uh, I wouldn't shock me if both of these teams won out, but I think the Eagles are going to figure out a way to lose one of these, ne- at least one of these next four, uh, probably on Sunday against the Seahawks. So um, I'm buying. Wow, I'm selling. Um, I am selling. I think you know a week ago I w- I would be buying, but only re- here's why I'm selling. One, you're right. The Eagles aren't right. And I don't know if this is really them or are they just that tired and that sluggish and that mistake prone. I don't know. But their path is light years easier than Dallas because Dallas all of a sudden now has to play teams with that are desperate. And I think two weeks ago, I assumed the teams like Buffalo, I figured they would mail it in after losing to Kansas City. The season would be over. They'd be in full dumpster fire mode, but they're not now. They got life. The Dolphins now have found found a way to screw things up enough. They're desperate. They're going to play Dallas. They're going to line up against Dallas and play like crazy. Detroit has found a way to screw things up. They've got to play Dallas and line up against Dallas and not pack it in and rest for the playoffs. So Dallas gets good, desperate teams. The Eagles, even if the Eagles are their B or C game, and they are this team, what they have down the stretch, Seattle, I think, is done. I'm disappointed in Seattle. I thought they were going to be better than this. They're not. So I think Seattle is probably more likely that they mailed it in than anyone. So I think the Eagles beat Seattle. I mean, yesterday before 7 p.m., I would have said the Giants have absolutely packed it in, and that's an easy game, but that's until the Sopranos got a hold of them, and now all of a sudden they Here matter. I mean, uh, but I'm, I'm actually going to say, I think Dallas goes 3-1 and one down the stretch, and I think that's pretty good. I, I could see the Eagles running the table the rest of the way. I could. And either way, the Eagles are going to win the division. They're going to get the tiebreaker. Now if they lose down this. I mean, not if what you said happened. I mean, if Dallas runs the table, well, they're they, going to get no, that tiebreaker. If, if they both go three and one, or if Dallas, if Dallas runs the table and the Eagles don't, then Dallas wins, of course. But if they're tied, the Eagles somehow have that tiebreaker, which I still don't understand. Yeah, I, I think Dallas goes three and one, which isn't so bad. Buy or freaking sell. ESPN listed its way too early Heisman candidates list for next season, and Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers will be in New York next year for the Heisman Trophy uh, presentation. Buy or sell? Man, that's 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 a good one. I, I, I'm gonna have to sell. Um, I think he, if he comes back to Texas, I'm still selling because what is he coming back to? Here's my here's what I think is gonna happen. Xavier Worthy is a junior. He's going to leave. The tight end, Jatavian Sanders, he's a junior. He's going to leave. Adonai Mitchell, the, the touchdown machine wide out, he's going to leave. Jonathan Brooks going to be coming back from a torn ACL. Uh, the only thing he's got going for him is that offensive line is going to be good. Now, we don't know what the transfer portal holds, but he's kind of, but if we're looking at what they have now, 
He's going to be having to break in a new set of weapons and how to break that new set of weapons in and, and still put up Heisman worthy numbers is very difficult. And also he's missed six games over the last two years. So there's no guarantee that Quinn Ewers can go wire to wire. He's yet to do that. So a uh, talented kid uh, getting to uh, New York City is not easy, especially with the guys you got coming back. Shador Sanders probably going to be back. Carson Beck from Georgia, Jalen Milrow from Alabama, Ollie Gordon III from Oklahoma State, and Taj Brooks uh, from who just announced he's coming back to Texas Tech. So it's a quarterback's award, and I think Quinn Ewers is going to be uh, definitely an All Big Twelve, um, or excuse me, an All SEC candidate at quarterback. But uh, as far as getting to the New York City for the Heisman, I got to sell that. Wait, is he coming back to Texas or not? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, that's that's a big if. I, I I told you last week. Yeah, I know. I, I know. So I know. I it's. I uh, didn't. You, but I would be. I that that kid Arch didn't come to sit for two years. I don't care how how Brady bunch his family is. He's still a Manning, and he didn't come to sit for two years. So I. I don't. I think Sarkeesian would love to have them both back. Who yeah, wouldn't? Of course. I mean, that guarantees that you're going to have a healthy quarterback. But uh, if I'm looking to go to the NFL and I'm Arch Manning, uh, I think the days of sitting for two years are, are gone. There are no Matt Castles nowadays. Well, there's Tommy DeVito's, but that's another story, another time. So does Quinn Ewers play at another school, or you think he's – the statement was – They've listed him as coming back. The ESPN listed him today as coming back and and a Heisman candidate. So you think he's a Heisman candidate if he goes somewhere else? No. Oh. Okay. I've never thought of him as a Heisman okay. candidate. No. He played well. He was a good quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking right, about good what? quarterbacks and we're talking about Heismans. That's different. Um, I, I'm going to you, – you've made a good argument. I'm, I'm going to – Buy it. I'm say it. <laughs> I'm gonna buy it. You said it. Because I'm gonna well, buy it, and I'm gonna buy it. Here's the jumping off point for buying it. Um, one, I think he does have to come back and play college football next year because I, I, I just, I think he's way down the draft board on quarterbacks. But you know, if the guy is cool with being a third rounder, then you know maybe he leaves. But if he comes back, his Heisman opportunity is actually in a few weeks. If if he does well and Texas does well in the fake playoff that's not a playoff but it's really four teams, let's say they beat Washington in a game that you know, they're going to have to beat Washington by scoring 50 or so, right? They have to score probably yes. I mean it's going to be a it's going to be a basketball score. They light up Washington lights them up, Texas lights up Washington, it makes Ewers look good again. If he has a good Final four, that's his Heisman moment. So I'm buying in that if that happens, it does probably because his name, he's got a Texas jersey on, although you're telling me he's not. But if he has a Texas jersey on and they're coming off a final appearance and it's a good appearance for Quinn Ewers, I think that's enough. PR to get him to New York next year. I don't think he's it. I think Shadour Sanders is not only the best player in the game next year, I think he's the first pick in the draft next year if he has any help whatsoever. But it might be enough for Quinn Ewers to get to New York. Buy or freaking sell. The Kansas City Chiefs will be a playoff flameout. Buy or sell. And I'm I'm gonna sell, and I'm I just I hate him I hate him right now I hate Kadarius Tony he, he, like, he, he, wow. he cost it cost us an all time moment that was yeah, a yes. wonderful wonderful football play and he's just been a bonehead all season one one great play in the Super Bowl does not make your career yep so he's on the chopping block I think um, I'm gonna sell it because Mahomes always seems to figure it out in the playoffs. He has the worst receivers in the league, and Travis Kelsey's energies are seemingly been spent on other things. Leave it at that. But I'm selling because the AFC is in shambles. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, if they figure out a way to get in, they could they could actually make a run. The Ravens are decent, but there's no Mark Andrews. 
Uh, Joe Burrow's out, so the Bengals are out. Um, Jacksonville, maybe, but they're up and down as well. Uh, so I just think the AFC, isn't it weird that about four weeks ago we just knew the AFC was way, way deeper than the NFC, but now we know the Super Bowl champ is coming out of the NFC. I think I'm selling it, which means I'm not saying the Chiefs are going to make it to the Super Bowl because I, I don't know who's making it, but it just doesn't seem like them. But a playoff flame out to me means they're going to lose their first game. I still think the worst case scenario is the Chiefs still make it to the uh, AFC Championship game. So I'm selling. I'm selling too. Um, because, yeah, it's a it's a train wreck. I mean, you know, if you tell me somebody has Miami losing at home to the Titans, uh, they're on crack. You tell me with the roster that Jacksonville has to be kind of a mess that they are, I would have never believed that. I would have bet the house, in fact, did bet some of the house on Jacksonville before the season started. So I can't figure out any of these teams. And so I'm, I'm going to sell too. I think Kansas City actually ends up in the championship game because they're not, I mean, yes. Kelsey's different, and yes, the receivers suck, but their defense is good enough. It's not like Mahomes isn't missing a beat. He's hitting guys in the hands. Mahomes is just as good as he's ever been. He has every right to be pissed. Not about the call. He has a right to be pissed at his teammates. The defense has a right to be pissed. They're close enough that I think if they just catch a ball or two, they're in the AFC Championship game because nobody else is good enough to knock them out. So... I I could I could see them there. I mean, Buffalo gave them all Buffalo had. Josh Allen was as good as he could be again, and and the Chiefs are six inches of being stupid away from winning that game, and we're having a different conversation today. So I don't think they're that far away from being the second best team in the AFC. And that's not a great I thing. Think both. But I, but I don't think they're yeah, that far I- away. I don't either, and I think Baltimore's got a shot to to do something. They they seem to have, to have really responded, even though they lost their best yeah. tight end and Mark Andrews. Uh, Lamar played pretty well this weekend, but who else? I mean, who would you say right now that you could expect to? You think Miami is going to go run through Kansas City? You think Jacksonville is? I I don't see it. Here's the qu- here's the one thing I'll say. The Chiefs struggle to score points, and if anything, if you get if you get Miami on that at that home field in Miami, and it's Tyreek Hill doesn't get hurt, uh, and they're playing uh, with all the marbles, I think Miami is soft as tissue paper. But I still think that they would probably outscore the Chiefs, even though I would never bet real money against Patrick Mahomes. I've made that mistake before. I won't make it again. But they are. Yeah, yeah, they only they're only going to score twenty four against the Bills at home, but that twenty four is good enough. Had they had, had had they not done something shockingly stupid, Pop Warner like stupid, they score twenty four at home and win. And I'm thinking, wow, they can be awful on offense and still win by only giving up twenty. That's a good that's a good day if you've got Patrick Mahomes. And they're figuring out a way to win without super weapons like they used to have. Yeah, no Tyree Kill and. Uh, they really miss him. Mahomes found a way last year, but I think those chickens may be coming home to roost right now. Buy or freaking sell. The Texans are on their way to blowing their playoff chances. Buy or sell. Man, I got to buy. They that that was such Jeez. a great chance Jeez. to to go to go eight and five. Yeah, beat the New York. I mean, just all you had to do was beat the New York Jets. Yeah. I mean, it's the New York yeah. Jets. I mean, yeah. how crappy yeah. are the New York Jets this year? And you give up a 30-burger to a team, and, and, and you got to listen. Listen to these scores for the Jets. I'm just going to put – I'm just going to tell you what they scored in the game. 13, 6, 12, 6, 13, 8, and then they scored 30. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable! Everything we said about the Texans leading into this went 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 totally wrong, yeah. and there is no explanation for it. They just didn't show up, 
and I think it's probably going to cost them in the end. Um, Jacksonville is is way talented, and they're going to probably figure out a way, or even the Colts, how to win the AFC South. The the Texans have they got Tennessee twice in the last four games, but they got to play Cleveland, which is never easy with that defense. And then they're at Indy. It's navigable, but after this, after the way they played against the Jets. Uh, who's to who's to say that they're going to go three and one down stretch? If they had an eight and five on their ledger, they could probably go two and two and be okay. But I just don't think that um, I, don't, I don't think that eight wins or nine wins is going to be enough for them to secure a playoff. So. Yeah, they're on their way to blowing it. I'm buying. Yeah, that that is a complete. I'm buying too. That what a buzzkill said. Zach Wilson. It takes Zach Wilson four games to throw for 300 yards and score 30 points. The guy who wasn't playing and didn't want to play and got stuck in there again lit up the Houston Texans and their defensive genius coach. And yeah, the game does matter. It's not a it's not a September October throwaway game. It was an absolute. I mean, that game really counts against him. I, I just I can't believe. With all that happened on that day, you can't find enough organization and incentive to beat Zach Wilson. I, I just you got to go in there thinking all you got to do is score seventeen points. Seventeen points. You can't give up three hundred yards to Zach Wilson. Nobody does that. Nobody. No one. No one. And when you when you are, it's not like I said. It's not a September game when you said, "Oh man, we were tired." It's not Dallas losing to Arizona. It's not that. It's it's freaking December, and you're playing for your playoff life, and you let that happen. I uh, and you know you have teams coming up, yeah, that you can beat. That you can beat. You probably went in there thinking, "Oh, all right, this is a dub. We we, we got C.J. Stroud," and I suppose we didn't bring up he got a concussion. Yeah, he may not play this week. Right? No, I, I'm. I, I hate to bail on him so fast, but you know that was tragic and horrible enough to to bail. So I, I'm buying, and I, I do think I. In fact, I would say we don't even have to make it sort of present tense. I think they blew their playoff chances. Yeah, I think it's over. Yeah, I think it's over, and too bad for them because yeah. that would have that would have put them one step ahead in the rebuild under D'Amico Ryan's, and it put them. That would have put them a step ahead, a year ahead of schedule, because we didn't really think they'd win more than five games this year. I did lose money on that one. Yeah, same here. But he can't see if you agree with this. He can't be coach of the year now. Oh God, no, no, no. He okay, just threw it away. No, no. He's I mean, I think C- C.J. No. Stroud is still going to be rookie of the year. I- I'm good with that, but. For D'Amico Ryan's and all you know, all the good stuff everyone is saying, and all the defensive genius and blah blah blah. Uh, you, you, Zach Wilson scored thirty points on you. I mean, you just you can't live that down. You can't. You can't unsee it. You cannot unsee that. <laughs> Buy or freaking sell. All right, final buy or sell with three wins in a row, including a win over the Packers on Monday night. Giants quarterback Tommy DeVito is becoming a New York rock star. <laughs> buy or sell. Uh, uh, my sell. Come on, guys. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's Tommy DeVito. It's, it's not, he's not even the most famous DeVito in New York. I mean, that's Danny. That's Louis De Palma. That's his uncle. And so... You know, that was great. It wasn't it good. Wasn't it, wasn't it great to have two games on last night and know you weren't missing anything by not watching the second one? <laughs> it's so that, I watched like two seconds of Green Bay, New York Giants, and the only reason I did that is because Peyton and Eli were on, and yeah. I, they kept switching back and forth, and I wanted to see what Kirk Cousins was talking about since he cost me a fantasy league championship. Um, I am. Um, I, don't, I, I just don't see it's, – it's Tommy DeVito. Who, who cares? And the Giants are done. They've been done. And um, congratulations on being better than Daniel Jones. Great. Just great. So, um, good, good, it's good that the New York people have something to talk about because the Knicks aren't setting the world on fire. And the, the Jets finally scored 30 points. You don't have to add in three games to get to 30. So, but it's been a really bad year for New York sports. And if Tommy DeVito lights your fire, then you're happy smoking. I'm selling. Do you hate the Sopranos? 
I love the Sopranos. Well, what are you doing, man? I mean, did you you got to take the you got to take the whole thing in? Did you not see his agent dead on the field with a black hat on? It <laughs> looked like that guy. I didn't watch the game. Oh, okay, well you, you missed it because his agent is down on the. Okay, first of all, the dad has all the gold chains. Um, the agent is straight from the Sopranos. Like I, I think any moment had things gone wrong, he's going to hit somebody in the legs with a bat. Like this dude, <laughs> it's it's like it's perfect. I mean, it just it's perfect. Um, the kid oh is, God. he shows up at the news conference. He's got ch- gold chains. Um, oh, no. I I think he's kind of a rock star. I do. Uh, I think New York likes the story. The fact that he's from Jersey. The fact that his agent's down there looks like he's from Jersey, too. The fact that dad looks like he's from Jersey, because they all are. Um, and it's kind of working. He played, I got to say... I mean, I made fun, we all made fun of him. I watched um, in sort of morbid fascination the first game that he played was some of the worst football I've ever seen in my life. And last night, the dude took them on a two-minute drill and made plays and made throws. And this is against the Packers, and now the Giants, I know it's hard to comprehend, the Giants have playoff life. They only trail the Packers by a game for the wild card. Now, that's how pathetic the bottom end of that division is. But still, if you take it all in, if you take the clip of his agent down, <laughs> you got to look it up. It was I'm, on the Manning I'm, cast. I'm they started talking right now. Oh, like, my God. Yeah, and then the guy, the guy's fedora. awesome. He's in all black, and he's got this fedora on. And tell me that the guy, if, if the guy, if like you said something to him, some big goon is going to come up and hit you in the back. Right? Or he might. He might. Yeah. So. Oh my just, God! That that is straight up Joe Pesci out of exactly. Goodfellas. Exactly. Straight up. Yeah. And he how he got you know of course he got to the sidelines. I mean I don't know he's just down there wandering around talking to people and he looks like he's off five dudes already today. So I Eli, like it. Call, Eli Manning apparently called him slimy. Oh. And um, that's he, a he clapped back at Eli. I bet. Um, because Eli called him Sean Sli- Slimy Stilato. <laughs> I got some inside intel from some of my boys. That was the nickname in college, Slimy. Thank you for that information. But Stilato called into WFAN this morning and squashed it, saying no one calls him Slimy. Uh-oh. So if Eli Manning swims with the fishes, we'll know why. <laughs> you better, better check underneath the car. Um, his, na- his name is Stilato. Uh huh. Even better. See, even better. Like the whole thing is just coming together, man. I, I know it's only three games. I know, and it's the bottom. You know, the, the bottoms of both the divisions is just it's shockingly bad on both sides. How the bottom falls out after you get fat past the first three or four, but I, I think in New York they're going crazy over this. Um, I'm not. Remember, remember uh, what was the guy for the Knicks? Lynn Sanity. Remember that. Jeremy Lin, yeah, yeah, basketball yeah, basketball player, right, yeah. right. Um, that's that, how that was. That was big. That was a movement. That, that was, was a movement. A movement. I, I'm not ready to say Tommy DeVito, Danny is is moving to that sort of echelon, but I think in New York they're trying, and I I kind of like it. And now we got the agent Stilato involved. We got some goons involved. <laughs> we got gold chains. I, I, I'm buying this. I think the kids, and he handles himself really well. He's really unassuming in the in the news conference. The uh, and I tell you what's funny. Is Brian Dayball really likes him and really s- says great things about him publicly, of which he never says about Daniel Jones? I'm not I saying he likes Daniel Jones. I, I'm not saying this kid, Danny DeVito, Tommy DeVito, I don't even know if he ever starts a game next year, but I'm, I'm going to buy the rock star thing. The rock, I wasn't going to buy it until I saw the agent. Once I saw that dude with the fedora and all black, I said, that's <laughs> it, man. This all works. It's all coming together now. Uh, I, I would have bought it if I'd seen the fedora before. Isn't, isn't, it, isn't it amazing? The and the black pinstripe yeah. suit with the with the no, black no. <laughs> with the black turtleneck. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's gonna he's leaving there and he's going straight he's going straight to a meeting. Yeah. And you know, it's not one of those good meetings. Oh no, no, no. He's uh he's gonna knock someone out for cash here after a while, no doubt. <laughs> That dude is. Stop he's, by his mom. Stop by his mom's and borrow a shovel. He is all in, man. He's all in. 
I, I'm buying it. I think uh, I just I I like it. I hope I hope they win again. I mean, I, <laughs> it's like the one of the few good feel good stories of the NFL this year. This has a chance to be kind of a good feel good story, kind of a fun story. And the league desperately needs it because the bottom half is so bad. I hope they win again. I hope they get in the playoffs. I hope they shock somebody. And I hope every single game, Mr. Stilato is right there on the sidelines. In black. In all black. In all black. Other guys are going to be scared to sack his client. <laughs> They're going to look over there and say, man, if I hit, if I hit, if I, late, if I late hit DeVito, I'm a, I'm a dead man. <laughs> Sack might mean whack. <laughs> That's right. He's gonna be here. You're gonna be over to the sidelines, just staring at dudes, so they know you hit my guy. You're gonna pay a price. How did Devito run for 175 yards? It's he, like they didn't want to touch him. Exactly. Exactly. And he was. He, you know, the guy's a pretty decent athlete. The Packers. You can move. You the can Packers move. actually had something to play for, and the Giants beat them. I just think the league is just figuring out a way to be mediocre overall, and that's not once, good for us. Once you get past on each side, tell me, tell me how fast the bottom falls out. Go to the AFC side right now. The best three or four right now. Go. Baltimore, Kansas City, Miami. That's it. That's it. And then it's just a yeah, mess. Yeah. It's a mess after that. Go to the NFC side, and the top three are plainly obvious. And then anybody any good after those three? That means that first weekend of playoffs, that wild card weekend is going to be some bad football. Very bad football. The only hope we got is Mr. Salado on the sidelines. That's all we got. Hope He's going to. So. If, if the Manning cast is smart, and I think they are, guess who's They'll on next on. week? Got to be on this. Got to be on. Because he and Eli have beef, and Eli needs to. Eli needs to go ahead and squash that now before it gets really serious. <laughs> please, Mr. Stilato, please, no. <laughs> Just a ring. All right, man. Sad as always. Good stuff. Good talking to you. All right. Later, man.